Midweek Pictorial, February 19th, 1920. English dirigible R-34, which successfully crossed the Atlantic last year, as seen from the ground, showing the four gondolas. The airship now being built for this government in England will be equipped with six. Photograph of officials connected with the construction of R-38. The twin hangar at Polham, England, which houses the R-34 and sister ship. A similar hangar to be built for the R-38 at Lakehurst, New Jersey will cost $2 million. General view of the R-34, which affords the best comparison with the still larger R-38. Note the numerous cylinders used to replenish gas supply. The R-38 being assembled at the plant of Messrs. Short at Bedford, England. On right is seen the framework of the R-37, under construction for the British government. Enormous framework of the R-38 being assembled. This photograph shows the great progress already made in preparing the huge craft for actual service and transportation to this country. One of the buildings at Rockaway Beach, New York, completely thrown from its foundations by the fury of the storm that has recently swept the Atlantic coast. Much of the beach has been washed away, and the damage to property is estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Summer bungalows fared badly during the recent terrific storms along the Jersey coast. Some of them are here shown torn from their foundations and blown out on the beach near Longport, New Jersey, not far from Atlantic City. The storm is said to have been the heaviest for years. Fortunately, ample warning was given and the loss of life has been small. Part of the wreck of the Pasadena Hotel at Rockaway Beach, New York, after the storm had visited it. The people in the hotel had waited too long and they had to be rescued by the fire department. A great part of this summer resort has been damaged by the encroachment of the waves. Even when buildings were not carried away, their foundations were so undermined that they will either have to be removed or practically rebuilt. Famous boardwalk at Atlantic City hard hit by the storm. Planks were torn up and railings damaged by the buffeting of the waves, and the work of restoration will entail heavy cost. Section of the concrete seawall at Longport, New Jersey, near Atlantic City, that was completely wrecked by the seas that plunged against it with the force of a battering ram. It was thought to be practically impregnable, but calculations went astray. Another view of the concrete wall at Longport, New Jersey. It was 12 feet thick, but a section of it was utterly smashed by the rending force of wind and waves. In the background can be seen a section that is still intact. Liquid fire used to aid in removal of snow from New York streets. Two army privates are here shown handling the stream of deadly fire, formerly employed by the Chemical Warfare Department against human enemies. An unusual scene on Fifth Avenue, New York's most famous thoroughfare, usually alive with hundreds of swiftly moving vehicles. Comparison with the men shows the height of the piles of snow. Boston was heavily hit by the snowstorm, which is said to have been the worst in that city since the famous blizzard of 1888. Shovelers are seen working hard to clear the railway tracks. Chain of autos caught in the storm of February 6th laboriously making their way down Fifth Avenue, New York. Sleet, combined with the snow, gave the thoroughfare an icy covering that speedily made traffic almost impossible. Train stalled in Boston during the most terrific storm that has visited that section in many years. Railroad traffic was almost completely paralyzed, telegraph and telephone wires were down, and immense loss resulted to business. Windshield to protect policemen from wind and sleet. The device was tried out in Philadelphia during the recent heavy snowstorm, and has received the enthusiastic endorsement of the force. It can be shifted readily to any point of the compass. Even the national capital, despite its position toward the south, is sometimes subjected to the same discomforts that a blizzard brings to more northern cities, as is shown by this recent scene in Washington, just opposite the White House. Scene at Kavala, Macedonia, where Greek soldiers are camping in the streets prior to demobilization. This latter process is slow, however, as many mooted points about territory still remain undecided. Group of Greek and Serbian refugees returning from Bulgarian internment camps. These destitute people are shown after traveling in one freight car for 500 miles, under conditions of transportation that are unimaginable to us in this country. Usually there is no heat except that furnished from the bodies of the people packed closely together. 
food is scanty and medical supplies often wholly lacking. The American Red Cross has done what it could to ameliorate conditions by establishing stations equipped with food, clothing, and medicine along the route. Naturally, under the lamentable conditions that prevail, typhus and other maladies due to exposure and malnutrition are rampant. At left of picture is seen an English nurse who cooperated with the Americans in affording what relief was possible to the refugees who are returning from a Bulgarian internment camp. Service of Thanksgiving under the Liberty Tree in Tirana, Albania, in honor of the American Red Cross. Many Mohammedans participated as a token of appreciation. The tree in the foreground is riddled with bullets, having been a place of execution for hundreds of patriotic Albanians. Makeshift Ferris wheel constructed from two tree stumps and a few sticks of wood in the American Red Cross playground at Elbasan, Albania. Baby carriages being unknown in destitute parts of Poland, these children have constructed one for their little sister from bits of wood nailed together. Hundreds of ill-nourished mothers and children gathering about the steaming bowl at Buzen, Romania, from which hot and strengthening American soup is dispensed to them. Miss Ruth Weir of London, Ontario, Canada, is here shown playing the part of Lady Bountiful to the hungry people. Group of demobilized Romanian soldiers, photographed on the steps of the American Red Cross building in Bucharest, Romania. These men are veterans of the Great Battle of Maricesti, where seven of their divisions held in check the army of General von Mackensen when it was invading their country. At right of the picture, an American officer is standing. Queen Marie of Romania in the national costume, addressing her people from the steps of an American Red Cross canteen. The sign over the doorway reads, This food and clothing are given gratuitously by the American people through the American Red Cross. Soldiers guarding the courthouse at Lexington, Kentucky, February 9th, to thwart the efforts of a mob of several thousand men who sought to storm the building and lynch a Negro who had killed a 10-year-old schoolgirl. Machine gun that fired on the mob at Lexington when it surged toward the entrance of the building. Five were killed and 17 were wounded before the rioters retreated. Would-be lynchers gathering before the Lexington courthouse where the trial was taking place of the Negro who had killed a white girl. Ruins of the high altar of the church at Teocelo, Mexico, where earthquake and volcano combined in the destruction of the town. All that is left of the church of Teocelo, Mexico, where many worshippers were buried in the ruins. A small mountain nearby slipped into a lake. Ruins of the Pueblo at Teocelo, Mexico. Beyond can be seen the volcano, still smoking. The condition of the survivors was terrible, as they were without food and their water had been rendered undrinkable by the eruption. Site of the town of Barranca Grande, Mexico, buried beneath the mud and lava from the volcano. There was great loss of life at this place, as the eruption came practically without warning, and the inhabitants had no time to flee. Public food depot at Vienna, Austria, with line of people waiting to get the scanty ration doled out to them. No city in Europe is more nearly on the brink of famine. Supplies are being rushed to them by America and other countries. Food, cooked at a centrally located kitchen in Vienna, being transported in large containers to various feeding stations. Not half the food really needed can be supplied. Poor of Vienna gathering wood near the city to take the place of coal, which is almost wholly lacking. The forest once belonged to the ex-Emperor Charles, but is now placed at the disposal of the public.